Well, John, I uh, see that you're still here, and I was a little worried about you uh, because I thought maybe one of those alien uh, spaceships that seem to be uh, all the rage these days might have come down and wanted some of your veggies. <laughs> I was really worried about it because I want your veggies. Or, or maybe it gutted my cow or... Ooh. Right, emaciated my horse or something. Wait, doesn't that mean wait? That means you have to get a cow first, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, is this the nineteen sixties? Um, uh, you know what? It sure seems the truth is out there. That's ah. what that's what counts. I I'm amazed that they started. I mean, the, this whole first big weather balloon that went across Alaska, Canada, and they finally shut down on the east coast. Uh, they they had no problem calling it a balloon, and um, and I had pictures of it and all that stuff. Then they started calling these things the smaller ones or the the subsequent ones unidentified flying objects, UFOs. Now why mm. they call them UFOs, I don't know because it makes us think of little green men and the truth is out there and Sputnik. Do you remember? Was it Sputnik? Was the first thing that went up in the air and scared the shit out of everybody? Yeah, we, we thought that uh, they probably, uh, back in the day, uh, we were in grade school, they probably had a duck under our desk. You know, the, the same thing that was going to protect us from Sputnik uh, was uh, protecting right. us against nuclear bombs uh, hitting uh, sure. our, 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 our local street. <laughs> sure. Even our children, much less our grandchildren, have no idea what an air raid siren sounds like. No, but they do know. They do know what a UFO is because that has sort of been kept alive in folklore. Although That's true. it's there's been like about a twenty or thirty year uh, hiatus about it, but it's back in full force now. I was thinking about maybe we could coin a new term. Remember when uh, was it Riley of the Lakers uh, got a, a a trademark on three peat? Uh, maybe we, you know, when the Lakers were winning all those games, or was it Chicago? Who remembers? Yeah, because uh, he he led both teams. But uh, I was going to call them uh, unidentified object phenomenon. UOP. Oh, oh. okay. Well, I, need because to, a, need to add more letters to it, right? Right, because uh, okay. you know, a, like or L nature like L HMO, L but that wasn't enough. Oh, they you could know, call them HMOs. More letters. HMO, sometimes we don't know what the bill means anyway. But anyway, yeah, no, so it looks like they're making a comeback. And and I wonder whether or not, and I, by the way, I know that uh, Twilight Zone has been on continuously for the last 50 years, and maybe it was just waiting its turn to come back. I guess so. And it, it, what I find interesting is that even though people are, using it as an excuse to get angry at somebody, the other side of the government or whatever it is, nobody's really fearing for their life. Nobody feels that right. this is going to be a nuclear holocaust or anything like that. In fact, even where we're close to theoretically nuclear uh, uh, confrontation in Ukraine, Ukraine, nobody's really too worried about that either. Right, because it's in Europe. Because it's in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Because they think it's somehow it's going to be self-contained, right. uh, but really, I think that part of the phenomenon also that that makes it different is that we're sort of getting real-time updates on these things being tracked and shot down, and um, wow, well, sure, you we're know, getting real-time updates that they're not telling us anything. Now, now maybe it also tells something about the fact that makes should make you feel good that uh, whoever is doing this, assuming that it, it's a it's a, a, a foreign country that wants intelligence about our stuff, is that apparently uh, we do this all the time as well, but we don't do it with balloons or well, uh, drones or whatever it is that are actually flying around with to figure out what they are. But we do it with satellites, which they do as well. But apparently right. our satellites are a little bit more advanced, so we don't have to do the riskier thing of having balloons uh, uh, shut down. I think uh, China just said that. Well, well, they look, found look, found ten balloons from us last year, and we're denying that, of course. So who knows? Uh, it, the hardest part that the, they're having identifying these things is the fact that there are American parts and scattered throughout whatever that payload is. American parts made in China. Right. Well, is it everything? You know, I mean, it could be any country anywhere. Could be an old Chevy up there. We don't know. <laughs> 
They wouldn't. Anyway, wait, no, uh, they wouldn't do that to an old Chevy, would they? <laughs> Come on, you're a car Look, guy. I, I think the important thing is that uh, I'm too old to care. Right, and and so what happens is when these things become so routine, you sort of say get you used to it. Okay, yeah. but but it just shows what comes around, and because UFOs were all the rage in the fifties, I remember that clearly. And uh, well, I was not particularly concerned about them. Uh, uh, here, it seems to be less concerned about everybody, other than using it as a, a a good excuse to point fingers about who didn't do what when you didn't shoot it down soon enough. Uh, who cares if it was over a kindergarten and they may right. have fallen and ruined all the crayons and and all the kind of nonsense surrounding it. Uh, but uh, it just it just shows that uh, you live long enough. Everything comes back. But next, you can see pedal pushes. What goes but, around comes around. Yeah. yeah, and even if it comes across Alaska and across Canada, yeah, it still. Comes by the around. way, going back to your car reference, though, one thing I don't think is coming back is the large fins on the back of cars. I, I don't. Go. I don't think that's coming back. All right. Well, I guess there'll be more. We'll have more to talk about next week. So just remember that the next time we get a Sputnik alert. Duck under your desk. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.